Dr. Morrow, and today we're going to be discussing brain computer interfaces. And I, I'm, I'm discussing this in, uh, out of my last um, video that I did in this uh, ChatGPT series how ChatGPT or AI, or AI in particular, sorry, can actually assist humans reaching their full potential. So let's go ahead. And, and that's, this was actually discussed in that chat. And I really, I've, I've seen this actually in a movie called Cyborg. Um, and it's been in other movies, but this, from you know, Jean-Claude Van Damme, everyone loves Jean-Claude Van Damme, don't they? 1989, I think it was, Cyborg, the movie, and they had um, brain computer chips um, and they were smuggling data uh, for just, I think it was for a cure to save the human race or something. Anyway, and I found that fascinating. And obviously, Elon Musk uh, and um, I don't know if it's Tesla or one of his other companies is actually working on um, brain computer interfaces. And the potential of this is amazing. So let's just delve into that. Um, now, if you do like these videos, please hit the subscribe button and the bell notification for your more videos. And of course, a like if you want to. Um, I hope you do enjoy them. They are quite fascinating to, to me. I, I actually love talking to ChatGPT about all this sort of stuff. And obviously, future um, AI chatbots as well. Brain computer interfaces are systems that, that allow communication between the brain and an external device, such as a computer, yep, using neural signals. BCIs, or BCIs, uh, as, they, as they can be... Um, shortened into, can be used for a variety of purposes, including controlling prosthetic limbs. Yep, that's a great one. Communicating with others and controlling devices. So there are several different types. So invasive and non-invasive. So invasive, obviously, um, in, in surgically implanted and non-invasive, um, uh, other, uh, or I suppose, external to the skin. Invasive BCIs involve surgically implanting, yep. While non-invasive uh, methods use electrodes placed on the scalp, a bit like an EEG or ECG. Currently, BCIs are mainly used for medical and research purposes, which is rightly so. Uh, but researchers are actively working to develop BCIs that can be used by people with disabilities and the general population. I suppose a <coughs> an example of BCIs is the cochlear implant. I know it's more of a prosthesis, um, and I suppose. Oh, I know. I suppose you can't really class that oh, I'm thinking pacemakers as well but they're not actually neurally linked just wondering whether the cochlear implant could be considered one anyway interesting throw a comment in if you think they could be Australian invention too by the way um, where are we up to currently BCIs are mainly used yes we see some potential for your applications of controlling prosthetic means restoring vision which would be amazing and what about spinal injury and things like that how good would that be BCIs are still in the early stages of development and there are many challenges. Um, where do you think um, are the most advantages for this system? I think it'll just basically, my typing's not very good. I think that it'll probably just repeat itself here, I'm, I'm assuming. Assistive technology, yep prosthetic limbs, restoring vision, disabilities, etc., which is amazing. I think really that's where we should be focusing on communication. Imagine actually not having to have a mobile phone and you can just like blink three times and call your mother. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be doing that too often. Um, but anyway, uh, control of devices. So computers, remote controls, you, know, you can turn on the TV with clicking your fingers. Medical uses, medical uh, research and treatment, um, monitoring brain activity, yep. Parkinson's, yep. Human enhancement. This is actually another movie or a series I think I watched. Um, it was a German movie, I think it was, and they, they looked, there was a group of doctors that were actually putting um, surgical enhancement implants in, into them, and they could, like, jump, you know, 10, 20 metres or something and do all this other crazy stuff. <sighs> research. Um, study brain and understanding neural processes. Yeah, it's important to note that BCIs are still in the early stages of development and many technical challenges need to be overcome. I'll just say, what is the main challenge at this stage? And I'm assuming that, obviously, that neural link. There are several challenges in the development. Signal quality, okay, recording neural signals and picking them up and reliably is a major challenge in BCI development. The signals generated by the brain are often weak and difficult to distinguish from noise. So methods are needed to improve the signal to noise ratio. Okay, 
increase the resolution of neural recordings. Invasiveness, yes, so infection, those sorts of things. Invasiveness uh, involves surgical impl implanting electrodes into the brain can provide high quality neural signals, but they also come with significant risks, including infection and bleeding. Non-invasive BCI or putting it in the wrong spot. Non-invasive BCIs, which use electrodes placed on the scalp and other parts are less risky. Um, yeah. Real-time decoding. Decoding neural signals into meaningful commands requires complex algorithms. Yep. I suppose that's where AI can come in, can't it? Limited control. I'm going to ask about that. Limited control. Uh, current BCIs are they used to control only a number of devices? Yeah. Okay. Ethical concerns, of course. Um, lots of different things. Privacy, security, misuse of the technology, yes, and cost is also another one. Despite these challenges, researchers are actively working to overcome these obstacles. Yep. And the last question is, can AI assist with real-time decoding? Yes, AI can assist with real-time decoding. And well, I thought it would. <laughs> Decoding sig neural signals into meaningful commands requires complex algorithms, which are, I guess where AI comes in, and I guess just using this chat GPT and other AI technologies, it vastly increases the productivity of um, data um, processing, computation, and those sorts of things. Decoding neural signals into meaningful commands requires complex algorithms that can be process data in real time. AI techniques such as machine learning and deep learning can be used to analyze and interpret neural signals in real time, allowing the BCI to respond quickly to the user's intent. Yep. Machine learning algorithms can be trained on large data sets of neural signals and corresponding actions to learn how to map neural signals to different commands. This can be applied to real time decoding, where the algorithms can analyze the neural signals in real time and predict the user's intended command. Yep. Deep learning, a subset of machine learning, can be used. I don't know much about deep learning. I might um, ask about that in another video. Um, a subset of machine learning can be used to automatically learn features from raw neural signals and can also be used for decoding neural signals in real time. These models can be applied to classify different types of neural activity, etc. In addition, AI can be used to improve the performance of BCIs by reducing noise, yes, in the signal, etc. It's worth noting that while AI can be a powerful tool to assist in decoding neural signals, it is important to consider the technology is still as an infancy, yes. But I think there's going to be a huge amount of um, uh, development in this space, and I think that um, in, in the previous video we talked about enhancing human potential, and I think that obviously AI, robotics, um, BCIs, all these other sort of peripheral technologies that are coming along with it um, are really going to change our lives forever. And I think that with any new technology comes an opportunity for for either a new invention or a reinvention of something else or an addition to an invention that's already been created. So um, I just see that as an infinite potential of um, expanding our consciousness, expanding our, um, our potential, I suppose, or actually assisting uh, you could argue, with our evolution. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe and stay tuned for the next uh, installment. Thank you.